Hi, I'm Effie. This is What Effie Reads. I don't know why I'm doing jazz hands. It's been a minute, but hopefully this is me back. <laughs> so in this video, I am going to be rounding up all of the books that I read in the months of January to March. There are quite a few, um, but also quite a few of them were parts of series so I'll group series together there were also quite a few rereads which I'm not going to spend too much time talking about so a couple of things I'll be talking about these in the order that I read them and the second thing is that content warnings to the best of my abilities will be in the description of this video so if you do have any triggers please do check out the description as I will have all of them listed as I say to the best of my ability. So the first book that I read this year was In an Instant by Suzanne Redfern. Sorry sometimes I have trouble with F's and THs. Um, this was a reread for me and overall I did enjoy it. I think I got a little bit less out of the story this time than the previous time that I'd read it and I think that was because I knew the twists and the reveals and stuff so it just didn't hit quite the same way. It was still an enjoyable read, it just wasn't quite um as good as the first time I'd read it. The second book that I finished was The Invisible Life of Eddie LaRue by V. Schwab. This is my annotated copy. It is incredibly annotated. Um again, so as you might be able to gather from the fact it's so annotated. This was also a reread. I will be completely honest. I started the year in a pretty bad place mentally but I find real comfort in the character of Henry so I kind of just wanted to like dive into his story and I'm so happy that on reread it was as good as the first time I read it. I would say that I saw a lot of foreshadowing but honestly the first time I read it was quite a close reading so I picked up on a lot of the foreshadowing things but it was still an amazing time and I actually really enjoyed the audiobook although I will say that there's a bit at the end where there's some British characters and the British accent was actually painful. Um, I sometimes have a hard time, even though obviously British, um, kind of discerning when an accent's like fake or not. You know that thing where like you're watching a movie and you think the actor has like the worst British accent ever and then you look it up and they are British. So I don't know if that's the case here, but to my ears they the British accent felt really bad but it's such a small part of the story so I you know it didn't really impact my overall enjoyment. The next book that I read was Her Body and Other Parties by Carmen Maria Machado. I listened to this as an audiobook and I think possibly that's why I didn't really vibe with it so this was not a reread for me this was my first time reading this book and so two issues one audiobook uh no actually three issues the fact it was an audiobook the fact that I don't generally vibe with short stories and the fact that I got confused and thought this was Machado's other book and um kind of went in thinking oh it's one thing and then realised no it's something completely different. I did like the fact that there were thematic similarities between some of the stories and we got some callbacks but it also made it very difficult for me to 
kind of find my footing in any of the stories. I also thought that I wanted a bit more from the individual stories. I think I like a little bit more closure to my short stories, which these didn't give me. Although I would be interested if on reread I have a very different experience because I have a clear idea of what this story or not story what this book is. Um, I would say that this is the kind of book that fans of Growing Things and Other Stories by Paul Tremblay and Things We Do in the Dark by Kirstie Logan. I think there's some similarities and I could see people that enjoy those short story collections also enjoying this short story collection. The next book I completed was The One by John Mars. I'm not going to talk too much about that and um, also The Minders by John Mars and The Marriage Act by John Mars because I do have a John Mars video that should have gone up months ago but obviously not been around um but I do have a John Mars video coming soon what I will say is I enjoyed the one um previously I'd read um The Passengers by John Mars I mean I've read all of John Mars's back catalogue now but in terms of his spectative works I'd only previously read The Passengers so the one was quite different from the other John Mars books that I had read. Um, I enjoyed it. It was quite fun to see the diversity. But then John Mars does a really good job of creating quite a diverse book. You have racial diversity. You have class diversity. You have... Uh, diversity of sexuality like he does create quite a well-rounded cast of characters so that wasn't um a surprise but overall quite enjoyed the story and kind of terrifying what comes out of his mind and then the minders didn't vibe with as much because it felt like it retconned something that happened in the one and just didn't really vibe with the characters in general in that book and then the marriage act felt like it could have been an episode of black mirror i thought it was really well executed and had a really good creep factor to it so loved that one the next um set of books that i read was i read some of the Wayward Children short stories that are available on the Tor website. I do consider those books for the sake of my tracking. So I read Juice Like Wounds, which was a reread for me. I read In Mercy Rain and I also read Skeleton Song. In Mercy Rain and Skeleton Song were the first time of me reading those short stories. And then after that, I also read the newest Way With Children book, which is Lost in the Moment and Found. Um, just like Wounds, I absolutely love the Goblin Market, so I really enjoyed that one. In Mercy Rain, I'm just a bit tired of the Moors. Like, it's a shame because when I first read a book set in the Moors, um, in the Way With Children series, um, I'm not going to go into too much detail in case you haven't experienced the moors before but just to say that it seemed like 100% my vibe and then the more we keep returning to the moors the less I enjoy it. I will say that I felt like I got something that I hadn't seen before in the story of In Mercy Rain but I just enough with the moors and I feel like this is a world that Maguire enjoys returning to but just enough please and Skeleton Song I really enjoyed the story but it also made me quite sad because it was 
structured very much like the novels that take place in the portal worlds um which means that we're unlikely to get a full length um novel from this character's point of view which is a shame because it's a character i really enjoyed but it was a very solid story in itself and then lost in the moment and found i will say that i really really loved that it had an author's note and i thought the author's note was written in a really sympathetic and compassionate way and it set the tone for the book whilst also providing comfort just absolutely loved it overall i got so much out of this story um the the main character story isn't quite far from my own experiences but i could see a lot of the the pain and the trauma i carry reflected and hurt like i say i'm not saying my past is actually anything like hers but there are things about her story that really resonated with me and there was a there's a specific thing of i guess like thematically about lost childhood that kind of got me right in here and i loved so much and i i feel like i say this now about every new wayward children novel but lost in the moment and found is my new favorite wayward children novel i still absolutely absolutely adore where the drowned girls go and that resonated with me a lot but lost in the moment and found just it did something for me <laughs> on to slightly lighter topics the next book that i completed was the dark side of the sun by terry pratchett i believe this was his first published novel i'm not 100 percent sure i do want to work through my um discworld collection and i do have plans to do it but i'm so bad at sticking to a plan anyone that's seen my look like, three darren shan videos and realize that i haven't finished that yet will know in general i'm quite chaotic i don't stick to plans very well but i wanted to read this and strata before moving on to the discworld books and it was weird because this felt very sci-fi whereas my previous experiences with pratchett have been a lot more fantasy so that was quite different but there's a lot of humor that feels just quintessentially pratchett um so i got a lot out of that there's also a section where it's talking about different um alien species and talking about their uh gender expression and there's one whole like alien species that basically are all trans um <laughs> like it isn't said it in so many words because it's sci-fi the the language isn't gonna be the same and also this book was originally published i think in the 70s um yeah um 76 this was first published so the language isn't going to be the same but i just really appreciated the kind of like yeah we are gonna have alien species that are trans it's just not gonna be a thing it's just how it is in this story so i love that but yeah this was a good ride even if it did pickle my brain a little bit next up we have the queering by brooke skipston this follows a 70 year old woman who for the past several years has been writing queer fiction under the pen name of Brooke Skipston but now a local podcaster like kind of like a podcaster um is threatening to 
without her. So she's decided that she's going to write one final story and it's going to the story of what happened to the real Brooke Skipston. There's a lot going on in the story but I really enjoyed the way that it all interconnected. I loved everything that it had to say basically. It was absolutely beautiful and I loved that we're following a seven-year-old protagonist and she gets a love story. It's just, just so, so beautiful. <laughs> it just made me really, really happy. And I'll definitely be reading more from this author in the future. Um, the author actually kindly sent me this copy. Like, after I'd already read it, I wrote a review on NetGalley and I got an email from the author going, do you, do you want a physical copy? So very grateful to the author for that. And she also sent me an ebook edition of one of her other novels. Um, so I'm definitely going to be reading that as well. Just I just had a really good time with this, you know. The next book that I read was the audiobook of Little Disasters by Sarah Vaughan. The same author as An Anatomy of Scandal. I saw that so much in bookstores when I was down the road in January. Um, and I thought nothing of it, then watched the Netflix adaptation and I was like, oh, I need more from this author. This was really well crafted. So I picked up the audiobook of Little Disasters and I will say it wasn't quite me because a lot of it revolves around motherhood parenting that kind of thing which just isn't me but the way the book was actually crafted was so well done it had a lot of twists that I didn't see coming there was especially a really impactful one right at the end where you think they're just kind of wrapping up the story kind of thing and then you have one final twist and I was like oh that was savage but overall really good time the next book that i read was going dark by melissa de la cruz how to talk about this book so i did not vibe with it which is really sad obviously but this book feels like a retelling of a popular story you know slightly changed up and because of that I didn't enjoy the book because I was like oh it's this story um another thing that didn't work for me was the fact that Chekhov's gun was really obvious to me in fact you you got it on page five and immediately I was like oh okay so this is how this is gonna go but because I knew this thing I was like oh okay so when this thing happens well it can't be can't be this person because of this um I realized that have I even said what any of these books are about sorry uh Going Dark is about a kind of famous YouTuber who goes missing after a trip to Italy with her boyfriend and obviously everyone is now looking at the boyfriend. It's about a lot more than that and I would say that a comp title would be Monday's Not Coming but it's a really hard one to talk about because the less you know about this story the better and I think the more impact it's going to have. I will say to give it its due it is a YA novel and it's very possible that as a 31 is that how old I am? I think I'm 31. As a 31 year old I didn't get the same surprise element because I was able to pick up on more of the pop culture references and that 
potentially was my issue with this book. But I genuinely don't know. I'm, I'm sorry I can't be more detailed about it. It's just one of these that, if you know anything, it, it takes away the experience for you, basically. The next uh, book, or books, because it was a series that I read, oh my gosh, they're so heavy, was the new Camelot series. So these were rereads for me, so I'm not going to go into too much detail. But we've got American Queen, American Prince, American King, and then Sierra Simone's got a digital short available called Dear Ash, which that wasn't a reread for me. That was the first time I'd read it. So I'm going to put um, the sequels down because these really are quite heavy. So the New Camelot series is a very rough retelling of the legend of King Arthur. We follow Greer, who meets, I don't know, like, she has some history with the person who is the President of the United States. Reconnects, that's it. So Greer reconnects with the President of the United States um, and they have a romance, but things are a little less straightforward than they perhaps would like. Although, to be fair, I really love the dynamic in this series. So obviously going into it, I knew a lot of the beats of the story. I knew what a lot of the twists and turns were as well. But that didn't take anything away from... My enjoyment with this series I actually think I enjoyed it more being able to see what was coming because unlike the likes of The Invisible Life of Adi LaRue where the first time I read that I was reading it really closely I was just kind of vibing the first time I read this series I didn't pick up on hints and foreshadows but I definitely did on reread and it made for a great experience and like I say there's a digital short now called Dear Ash and it's a letter written between two characters and it just added a little bit more romance a little more depth and I loved it I loved it so much the next book books whatever is also a series and also a reread and it was Akatar. yeah i reread the Akatar series i think this was like my third or fourth time reading this series but it was only oh gosh i'm gonna end up with a pile of books just in frame apologies but it was only the second time that i'd read them physically in the past, when I've reread them, I've read them in audiobook form, so it was quite different for me to go through and do a physical reread of them. Um, I don't know, it's just one of those stories that at this point I know really well, so it's quite comforting to go back to, and my brain's just not been wanting to play ball the past few months, hence why not been around so there was just something comforting and junk food about reading them they are not high literature by any stretch of the imagination and the author does have her problems um but i enjoy the world that is created in these books and the characters are fun enough. Would I like more diversity in the stories? Very much. Do I think that is in the author's wheelhouse? All evidence points to the fact that that isn't. And that's fine. Oh, yeah, well, it's not fine, but I find diversity through the variety of books I read. So, yeah. But just just be aware that I mean if you're not already aware you're probably not someone that chooses to be aware but just be aware that this author does have 
some problems. Um, the next book that I finished was All the Dangerous Things by Stacey Willingham. It's the story of a mother whose child went missing approximately a year ago and she's constantly taking speaking gigs to try and keep the search going, keep interest in f finding out what happened to her son and she gets approached by a podcaster who's like I want to help etc etc and then she's kind of like doubting her herself and her memory I think this book had a lot of promise but I really wished that it had leaned more into the way that insomnia can mess with your head and make you doubt your reality and a lot of just the other issues that come with insomnia I think because there was a sleepwalking aspect to this story it kind of muddied things up and they didn't work. Another thing I want to know and it could just be that the author is not aware of the issues, it could be that the author is from the American South and again not really aware but in Willingham's first book there's mention of a plantation wedding and in her second book they there's mention of confederate soldiers neither of these things are particularly like central to the story so in my mind they're very strange details to just randomly throw in and it makes me a little wary as i say benefit of the doubt the author could just not be aware that she's making a trend of putting iffy things in her books but it just raises not quite a red flag but maybe an amber flag in my brain. The last tale of The Flower Bride is the story of a unnamed bridegroom and his wife who have a whirlwind romance together and the condition of their marriage is that the bridegroom never asks questions about his wife's past. Overall I really did enjoy this story. No, it took me almost to the end to realise that I was enjoying this story. There's a lot of toxicity in this book which actually really vibed with how toxic it was um but it also wasn't ever trying to be anything other than toxic like it wasn't trying to present this as healthy like it was very clear like this is toxic this is codependent this is not okay I think my biggest issue was that I went into it expecting it to be fantastical when it isn't really it's fantastical in the sense that Pan's Labyrinth is fantastical and I would say actually this and the book adaptation of Pan's Labyrinth are like really good comp titles like if you like one you'll probably like the other and I did absolutely adore the ending I will say that the twist I'm not sure if it's meant to be a twist but the um the twist of it I guessed very very early and that did impact my enjoyment to an extent because I was going okay but when are we going to get confirmation but overall actually quite enjoyed it and I think on reread I'll have more of a enjoyment throughout because I'll have a clear understanding of what's happening there was one character that absolutely baffled me because they're referred to by two very different names and it isn't until substantially later into the book where like it's a hundred percent confirmed that they are the same person so it took me a lot of brain power to try and figure out what was going on there. The next books that we're going to be talking about are the Bidden series by Crystal Sirlock. So that's 
Candidate for Sinful Reunion, Secret Desires, The First Candidate, Beyond Ruin, Unbidden Love, The Honeymoon, The Other Woman, Forbidden Halloween, Contested Heart, Palm Springs and Fading Dusk. Okay, so this series is incomplete and I do not expect it to ever be completed. That's fine, authors do not owe you anything. However, going through a series, being told repeatedly that a specific book wraps up the story, knowing that that book exists in the world, and then that book, in fact, not wrapping up the story, and also introducing new storylines for several side characters was incredibly frustrating and made me angry. The rough summary of the series is that a woman who is struggling with student debts finds out about a fancy exclusive escort service and then she finds a man who she falls madly in love with. These books are definitely not particularly well written and that's fine like I wasn't looking for high literature, well written, well sub well crafted, I wasn't even looking for proper spelling, grammar issues that an editor would have picked up like I was vibing with them until I realized that this series would never be completed which as I say authors don't owe you anything that's fine um so I didn't get a conclusion and the way that one of the characters was treated I didn't enjoy I didn't enjoy the toxicness like of one of the characters like I could probably make a whole video just ranting about this series I will say that the other woman and Forbidden Halloween were pretty serviceable unfortunately the other woman doesn't really stand as a standalone because it's telling the story of previous books but from another character's point of view and Forbidden Halloween I guess it does, but I don't know how much of prior knowledge you actually need to bring into that story for it to make sense. But yeah, did not enjoy it. And the fact that Fading Dusk, I didn't vibe with the romantic pairing at all. I know that people do enjoy it. It's very much taboo romance, but it gave me the ick and that's fine. I'm not yucking someone else's yum. But for me, it's a no. Thankfully, the next book that I completed was actually one of the favourite things that I have read so far this year. And that was Blow Part 1 by November Sweets. We are following a character who has a horrendous backstory. And I will say it is shown in some detail, but I think... The author does a good job of giving you just um just enough detail so that you get an idea of the full scope of what's happened but it's not gratuitous um so yes this main character has had a horrendous history and now turns to music drugs sex alcohol to cope basically and then you have this group of guys who happen to own the club that she likes to frequent who want to be with her and I just I loved this book so much I loved the way that it dealt with the trauma I loved the way that the men wanted her exactly the way she was and didn't see her as being broken I loved the little touches like there was a point when they were talking about 
uh, their charity work and saying we're not going to be using the people we're helping in our charity work because that kind of defeats the point and it was just such a little throwaway line but it added to the whole package of how thoughtful this story was i will say though as you might be able to gather from the title it does have a massive cliffhanger because we are waiting on part two but that is meant to come out at the end of may so not too much longer to wait but absolutely absolutely adored it the next book that i read was like backed up awful it was the red by tiffany reese I picked it up because someone on TikTok, and you know it's always a bad idea when you listen to TikTok recs sometimes, but someone on TikTok described it as the spiciest book they'd ever read. And whilst logically I should have realised that spice does not always equal sexy, I didn't. And this book might technically be the spiciest thing I've ever read, but boy was it painful to read. It was pages and pages and pages and pages of sex written in such a clinical way, things described in the most minute detail. But not only that, was the whole, like, situation meant that consent felt very dubious as it was. And then there was lines about the character going to sleep and then the other character going, oh, well, I'll just sleep with you whilst you're asleep. Whilst, I guess that's cnc it was really uncomfortable especially with how clinical the writing was um also there were undercurrents of just ick for me very similar to the ick that i had with fading dusk and yeah overall it wasn't a vibe the other thing that i kind of want to point out about this book is Clearly, it does have in an audience. It does have people that very much enjoy this book. However, I find it really hard to conceptualise who that audience is because this book touches on some very niche kinks. For, for a reader to enjoy like every one of those kinks, I don't know. It just... It didn't work for me. Also, final thing I will say is that... So the whole whole uh, concept of this book is that they're recreating uh, art pieces in the bedroom. Um, and one of them is a slave auction. So that wasn't a particularly comfortable scene either. I mean, none of it was comfortable. It was quite quite painful to read i mean if if you enjoy it absolutely brilliant but not for me at all another one of my favorite books this year in fact it was my favorite book that i read in the first three months of the year was on the savage side by tiffany mcdaniel so this um book and i'm probably gonna get i'm probably gonna pronounce the place name wrong but this book is based on the Chili Coffee Six, which are six women who were missing or murdered in an area of America ch called Chil Chili Coffee. I'm not sure. Um, and basically, the case is still open and we don't know if there ever will be a culprit found for them. It's a horrendous story, especially because 
their case has been so historically mismanaged and the way that they just were seen as nothing. So in this story, you are following twins Daffy and Ark and you see a level of generational trauma and the way that poverty and trauma in general can impact someone's life and it was absolutely heartbreaking this is not an easy book to read by any stroke of imagination but it's so important and so beautifully crafted that if it's something you can manage to read I would definitely recommend it and the twists of it were just brilliant I just I can't like I can't really say what exactly worked so much about this book but there's a lot of compassion understanding and beauty and just generally like Tiffany McDaniel has such a way of writing that leaves you feeling in awe um I actually have a short where I kind of included a few of my favorite quotes from the book so if you need further convincing please do check out that short I just I loved it so much and I'm like I'm flipping through my reading journal to like get to my thoughts on the next book and I have pages and pages of quotes because it's just that good the next book that I finished and it's the last physical book I've got on my pile but it's Twisted Love by Anna Huang I was pleasantly surprised by this book actually because I went in with pretty low expectations. I'm pretty sure this is the series where people say the series in general is really good, but give the first book a miss. It's not that great. And I actually, I really vibed with it. Except the ending just fell flat for me. Like I did not like um, the way the ending was handled. It felt really rushed or possibly dragged out. Like something... Like the pacing was wrong. I just can't quite figure out if it was too long or too short. And I think it could have gone either way. Like it could have worked if there was more to it and you got more detail and like saw these characters together a bit more. Or it could have worked better if it was shorter and more like an epilogue. But the length that it was, it didn't feel earned. And I will say as well that I I hate third act breakups, but largely that's because it usually revolves around miscommunication, which, I mean, this was a third act breakup that revolved around miscommunication, but it felt authentic to the characters. So I guess I'll give it that. I am interested to see how I get on with the other books. Um... Especially because, as I say, I'm pretty sure this book, everyone says to skip, but the rest of the series is quite good. The next set of books that I read were The Inheritance Games. Um, I believe this is an ongoing series because there's only three books out at the moment, but there's a fourth one, I think, coming out in September. So I had a really good time. I, I think I went in with incorrect expectations about what the first book would be so I would say that I probably vibed with that one the least but books two and three felt pretty solid to me I thought the writing um was relatively strong or at least there was some good choices that had been made like the fact that Things that you're probably going to be guessing at anyway were revealed pretty soon. So you had that confirmation and you weren't just waiting for things to be revealed to you. Um, I also just loved the found family vibes. Like these books were pretty surprisingly solid, actually. I mean, again, they're not like 
high literature, but they were they were good time. <laughs> I don't know. Like the w- the way my head's been at, like most of these were just like I guess why I would deem junk food books, but they were still really but they were exactly what I needed at the time. The next book that I read was Seven Days in June by Tia Williams. And I would say that my issues that I had with this book are pretty much the same as the issues that I had with Twisted Love in that the final section either felt too long and it needed to be more of an epilogue or it felt too short and it needed we needed to see these characters more together um it did do it slightly better than twisted love but it was very similar in terms of what i didn't like about them i also didn't like how insolvent it felt like i guess like you're meant to see it as this like epic romance but when you think about it like they basically known each other for 14 days with like a 15 year gap in the middle of those like the first seven and the second seven and I was just like nah nah that it just it didn't work for me because it felt so insta lovey just unfortunately it didn't do what I was hoping like it was it was impactful it was talking about some pretty significant things but it just didn't hit me the way that I was hoping it would. We're almost at the end, I promise. So the next book that I read was the audiobook of The Dead Queen's Club by Hannah Capen. I really enjoyed Foul is Fair by the same author when that came out a few years ago. So I thought, ooh, yay, more Hannah Capen. And it just didn't quite... I think because it was telling a historical story and maybe it's different in the US but for me like I know what happened with Henry VIII and his six wives so it's not like it had any surprises for me like I knew who was going to die because they died you know it was pretty much like if six were a book which cool I don't know it just it didn't wow me in any particular way like it was pretty solid but like I say like I know what happened with Henry VIII and his sex wife so <laughs> I don't know the next book that I read was 100% a hate read I picked it up knowing that my best friend had hated it so I fully went in with that expectation and unfortunately it was even worse than I'd expected and that was How to Sell a Haunted House by Grady Hendrix. So I think my two major issues were the fact that the house wasn't haunted. It had, I mean spoilers, but it had a possessed puppet. Um... And that just wasn't scary to me. Like, it wasn't even funny. It was just like, oh, I don't care. (laughs) And then my second issue was that, so I listened to it as the audiobook, and with about three hours left of the audiobook, and I can't remember if that was a double speed or one time speed, but with three hours left, It felt like the story had wrapped up and there was a point where you could have had like an impactful sort of or is it all over kind of moment but like it felt wrapped up and then it was like nope we're gonna have more story we're gonna introduce like this whole other backstory for this puppet and it just kept going on and on and on and it just didn't work for me and I know people are absolutely loving this book and I think a lot of it is going to come down to how you feel about the central thing of the puppet basically 
the other thing is that and i don't know if the the blurb that we see in the uk is the same as the blurb we see in the us but the blurb that i saw gave an impression of of a bit more of a thoughtful story where you're basically looking at generational trauma the impact that parents can have on their children in the sense of trying to make their children into something that they feel like they've missed out on or just kind of living vicariously through them and sort of making them their puppet or whatever and whilst I fully am on board with that being a metaphor and you know the fact that it has become a real possessed puppet in the book could be like taking that metaphor further I just don't think they spoke delivered on the promise of what the blurb seemed to suggest and that was a shame for me and it just didn't work for me obviously the next two books that I read were both rereads and they were Daisy Jones and the Sex by Taylor Jenkins Reid and The Final Revival of Oakland Nerve by Dawny Walton. I picked up Daisy Jones and the Sex because I'd watched the TV show and I just wanted to go back and experience the book, especially because there's things that happen that I was like, oh, did that happen in the book? And I wanted more, basically, because I enjoyed the TV show. Um... But what I will say is that having watched the TV show and seeing the way that we had characters being given agency and just it being a bit more complex and interesting, going back and reading the book and go, oh, so this character was kind of just sidelined or whatever, like... I think having that very direct comparison changed the way that I saw the book. I do remember quite enjoying the book the first time I read it, but it just didn't hit quite the same as the TV show, and that's fair. The other thing is that there's a lot of fat phobia in the book, which obviously was not enjoyable at all. And the final revival of Opal and Nav, the very first time I read it, which was in my reading the Goodreads Choice Award debut novels category, I read that not last December, December before. Um, and I remember thinking that I thought it was better than Daisy Jones and the Six, but because I... It'd been a few years since I'd read Daisy Jones. I couldn't really give a direct comparison. So I read them back to back so I could go, okay, so do I actually feel that way? I'm 100%. Like, there's no comparison. The final revival of Opal and Nev is so much better and completely blows Daisy Jones and the Six out of the water. I mean, to be fair, I don't know if these two books are actually compared. I mean, there's there's a few similarities to it. It's set in the 70s, following musicians, but, like, there's some other stuff, but spoilers. But the story of Daisy Jones and the Six is kind of a romance, whereas Opal and Nev is looking at performative activism, racism, sexism, and just it's just so much more complex and interesting also barney turpin does the voice of opal in the audiobook and in fact like the audiobook is amazing and would thoroughly recommend if it's the kind of thing that you vibe with i would say i'm generally more of a one narrator kind of person but for the style of book that this is which is told through interviews it really does work very well to have 
uh, multiple narrators. So yeah, highly, highly recommend. And we're finally on to the last books that I read in the months of January to March. So I guess like even though my brain has been playing up, I read quite a lot of books. And the last books that I read were Shadow and Bone. Um, I just read the core trilogy. I mean, I, I have read like the other books now, but we're talking about up to the end of March. So I read Shadow and Bone, Siege and Storm and Ruin and Rising. And what I would say is actually I was pleasantly surprised because I feel like everyone says skip the Shadow and Bone series, go on to Sixth of Crows. But, you know, like... I don't like the central romance, but that sounds like everyone feels that way. Um, but aside from that, like, they were really surprisingly good. Season Storm was rough. Like, <laughs> in my reading journal, I basically, I was like, okay, this thing happened and this thing happened. And then I was like, oh, yeah, that's the whole part of the book. But I've condensed it to a paragraph when the book's like 500 pages or something it's really long for what it is but I found that Shadow and Bone and Ruin and Rising were actually pretty enjoyable I mean there was no way I could see a lot of the things that happened I thought they had reasonable emotional impact like I'm a bit of a sucker for I think it's called The Price of War and I don't feel like Bardugo gives us enough of the price of war, if that's what it's called. But if you kind of like ignore that, like they're very well constructed and you have so many characters that you enjoy and you want all the best for. And I fully understand why people ship the Darkling and Alina. Although I was really confused because like, I've heard that Bardugo really doesn't understand or like that shipping. And then in book one, it's like one of the core romances. And I'm like, why? Why? But yeah, it, it makes sense now, I think. But like, I like the character of the Darkling. I can see why Ben Barnes talks about him as being quite complex. I mean, it also helps that I went into this series having previously read uh, Demon in the Wood. I don't remember too much of it, but I do remember, like, enough to come from a place of possibly a bit more understanding like the darkling is awful don't get me wrong but like he's complex as well I mean I'm talking these books up and it's much like a lot of the books in this video where they're kind of like they're easy they're not gonna be like the most amazing things you've ever read but they're really easy to get through they're enjoyable they're a fun time and at the end of the day like Reading's my hobby, so I'm going to read what makes me feel good. And if my brain is choosing not to behave, even more so, I'm going to read things that are easy to read, you know? Does that make sense? I don't know. I would love to hear about, I don't know, tell me your best and your worst book that you read in the first three months of the year in the comments down below and I'm more than happy to chat about any of the books I've talked about in this video don't forget the content warnings for all of the books to the best of my ability will be in the description if you want more of my face I don't know why you would but there'll be a video recommended that YouTube thinks you're gonna enjoy up here and Press the subscribe button here. Love you. Bye.